Hello, this is uh, the Emergent Event Sense Making Call, uh, Delta Surge, third quarter 2021. Uh, this is our first content call. Um, and uh, welcome. So, the idea of this call for me at least is to, to spend hopefully at least like half or maybe even two thirds of it uh, actually, sorry, getting Bill in. Um, uh, getting just content set up, uh, telling the story of uh, the Delta variant uh, in enough background, kind of, so that then when we start getting tweets or links or whatever, um, uh, we'll have some grounding uh, foundation where we can start building stuff. So, you know, what's a variant? What's uh, gen uh, gen gen genotyping, sequencing? What's uh, uh, you know, how do the vaccines work? Are the vaccines working? What are the most important things we need to know? Um, so my idea is that's all going to go into wiki pages. Uh, so I set up a HackMD, um, which is in the Mattermost, and I'm also going to try to put it in the chat here. Um, but, and Joanne, you don't have to worry about this. Um, but <laughs> um, I think a lot of this is going to end up going into Obsidian on my machine uh, to start off with, and then we'll see where, where to take it from there. So to that end, let me share my screen real quick, too. Bill, I, I think you might have um, you might have heard, but I'm hoping this is mostly a content call. Um, uh, content, um, rather than chit chat the way that we usually uh, the way that all of us usually do in OGM and and nearby uh, okay so now I think you can see the Google meet call as well as yeah I don't even know how to get it around that now that I think about it I'm gonna slide you all over to my other screen and see what happens Okay, so now I can see you if I look over away from you. And hopefully you can see my screen and we can just chat about how cool uh, COVID and Delta and stuff is. Um, okay, I'll, I'll live with it. Actually, maybe I'll turn off my camera for now. Well, thanks. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so so the the general idea, so two general ideas. the The meta idea, the meta goal, is to build systems to sense make stuff quick, quickly, and fast, and for the benefit of humankind. Um, the The smaller goal, uh, the the activity that we're going to do, is just like, okay, this Delta thing is happening. What are we going to do about it? Um, what do we know about it? Uh, who who are the experts? Um, so I think a thing to start with maybe is just questions, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm going to make a, a questions page on the wiki. So this is a wiki. Yep. Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, so the, the way I think about that is that it's the the effort is named after Delta, um, uh, but that it also includes other things that are close close nearby. Um, so if Lambda got big or Epsilon got big, um, I think it would still be part of this. Um, and obviously, you can't really talk about the Delta variant without some background uh, in how COVID-19 works and, and that kind of thing. So... So it's kind of centered around Delta, but uh, anything that is important for understanding the Delta surge, not just Delta, the Delta surge uh, is in bounds, I think. Um, uh, so now, uh, those of you who know about MassiveWiki know that the stuff I'm typing in, into Obsidian here 
is not going to be some pe stuff people can't collaborate with me. Um, if you want to collaborate, hit the HackMD, and then I can copy and paste between these two. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so Stefan, um, I think you're you're an excellent question generator. And so, what are what are some things that you kind of wonder about Delta and COVID? It is. Um, Joanne, do you want to talk about that a little bit? How is the Delta variant different? One of the in yeah one one of the interesting things about um, about age and health of your immune system is that for certain diseases uh, you can end up getting sicker if you have a stronger immune system. So in the 1918 flu ec epidemic, uh, younger people like not not kids but in people in their 20s who had really good immune systems. The, the disease tricks your body into overdrive. And there's something that's called a cytokine storm that happens. And it happens more if your um, 
uh, if your immune system is healthier. And so more 20s, 20 and 30 year olds died than you would have expected. Um, uh, COVID, the the early variants, wild type and uh, the early variants, we we kind of came under the assumption that kids don't get it as much. They spread it less. Um, they get less sick. Um, and that's changed a little bit with Delta. Um, so now younger people are getting sick. Um, kids are getting sick. Kids are in the hospital. Um, how about other stuff, uh, other things about Delta being uh, different? Anything you can think of, John? Um, Michael, Jerry, Bentley, Judy, welcome. Um, uh, yeah, Coway, not Conway, right? Um, uh, I'd like you all to meet my wife, Joanne. Um, uh, Joanne's, uh, well, Joanne's the love of my life. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, uh, and for the folks joining, uh, we're, we're trying to keep this fairly content f full. Um, so we're trying to keep most of the call about uh, just about Delta and COVID and stuff like that. Uh, I'm taking notes into Obsidian. Uh, with, so this is, you know, into my copy of the uh, 
DS3Q wiki. Um, there's a HackMD uh, linked in maybe the chat and also in Mattermost uh, if you want to type stuff while I'm typing. Uh, one of the things you'll see that I'm doing is I, I can see that we're, I'm going to have to go back through this transcript. Uh, so I'm taking down times um, of when, when we talked about something. Uh, Joanne actually rattled off a bunch of stats, uh, which would be really useful to capture. And it was just too fast to capture in the notes. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I've probably got that in, you know, in um, uh, in Signal from Joanne. But uh, this timestamp will help me find it again and and uh, transcribe it, or us, I guess. Um, uh, another question or another another subject that comes up for me is there's an interesting thing that I still haven't heard talked about much. Um, this is uh, Dr. John Roberts in the UK uh, has a, a weekly uh, YouTube uh, segment he does. It's it's quite long, quite deal, detailed. He's really good. Um, he's... Um, yes, Joanne? I, I meant to say daily. My head in my head, it sounded like daily. <laughs> um. So one of the you know one of the things out of this, uh, Joanne can rattle off who you want to talk to and who you want to stay away from. So Dr. John and Dr. Osterholm are both excellent. Dr. Monica is anti-excellent. Um, she she says things that people end up hearing as the wrong information. Um, uh, so an interesting thing that Dr. John surfaced a week or two ago actually is that um, let me. I'm going to have to slow down a little bit and explain through this. Um, we know uh, he's been watching studies in the UK, Israel, and US, as well as many other things, but this is UK, Israel, US. Um, we know from Israel that um, the strength of the vaccine, the strength of your, your immune response is starting to wane um, uh, because they've had people vaccinated for six months, you can start to see it wane after three or four months. It starts to get less and less. And at six months, it's, it's fairly low, but it's not, well, I'm, I'm going to fill in the rest of it. And then you can correct me if I'm still wrong, but it's not for everything. It's for the milder forms of the disease. Um, so you, it's getting easier and easier for, for vaccinated people to catch it. Um, the, the uh, protection that they have um, for se severe disease, serious disease, severe disease, and I don't know the, well, we have different definitions for those depending on who you're listening to. The protection from being hospitalized or dying stays high. Um, it changes a little bit. It doesn't even necessarily go down. Um, it actually kind of goes up sometimes in some of those months. Um, so it's not like the end of the world. Um, it's not like, oh my gosh, we're all going to die. That's not going to happen. But um, uh, so Dr. John lives in a place where they had the Delta surge and they've, they've kind of gotten to the peak of it and it's going back down. The U.S. is still looking at the, the surge, up, you know, going up. Um, the data from Israel says that what's going to happen is even the vaccinated people in the U.S., the, the longer you've been vaccinated, the, um, the less, you know, you're, you're start going to, you're going to start going down from 95% protected to, you know, 90% protected to 85% protected. More vaccinated people are going to get sick. They're not going to end up in hospitals. They're not going to die, but they're also going to be the people spreading it. And if you have a large reservoir of unvaccinated people, you definitely don't want more people spreading it. So, and, and you definitely want to apply public health measures like mask mandates and, you know, social distance mandates and shutting down big events where, where you get cross infection and things like that. So obviously the U.S. isn't in that mindset. So another thing that was interesting out of the Israel data was that the length of time between your first shot and your second shot for the two shot doses uh, made a difference. So, um, uh, I guess in Israel and UK. So in Israel, they had three, three weeks between doses um, and because they're Pfizer. And so their, their, vac their 
uh, mild to medium um, protection started to wane. In the UK, they have eight to 12 weeks between uh, shots. And maybe we can ask Joanne about why that is um, later, maybe not. Um, with a longer time, uh, that appears to be the, the variable, the longer time between shots makes it so that you don't wane. Um, so the UK people who've been vaccinated, vaccinated for six months are not waning in the same people same way that the Israel people are. So there's another variable that kind of throws things into it. You can look at the US and go, okay, we're mostly the three weeks, two, two or three weeks between shots, um, which is different, you know, same as Israel. So we're probably going to wane in the same way that Israel is different from the UK, which isn't getting that wane. No, I, I can hear him. I'm going to shuffle around my, my, well, I think I'm going to put the screen share back on, but I'm only going to share my browser.
It, it makes sense. And I wonder, do you have a question in there? Or, or I see Joanne's hand up too. Joanne's. There's, there's a whole fascinating um, and sad history of, of science. Um, the, the aerosol versus droplet thing is actually a story that got started in the 50s. Um, and it, there was a misunderstanding um, but with studies. And so at some point, science as a whole decided that you can't have infections via aerosols. Um, there were parts of science who knew that you could, um, but that vectored you know, most of medical science and a lot of biology to to just assuming that aerosols were not a thing and that it was all about droplets. And so that's why we spent eight, nine months in 2020 caring a lot about droplets and fomites and things like that and not understanding at all that it was mostly aerosols. So that confusion is still persists. It's starting to shift the tide because there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people dying and, 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 you know, millions of people, hundreds of millions of people displaced in, in their lives. And so it matters that it's aerosols, but it's still a confusing thing for people. And that, that knowledge is going to take a while to shake through, you know, the system. Thank 
There's an, I, let, let me say one interesting thing that I'm going to stick on until I can think of the other interesting thing. One interesting thing is there's kind of two models that you need to think of. One of them is, uh, Stefan, you did a pretty good job of talking through kind of a model um, of infection, you know, like uh, virus particles, um, uh, how many you need, where they need to land, and what happens after that. The, I know there's a lot of complexity to the immune system response to that, and and to do a good model, um, I saw a pretty good one on Twitter actually. To to do a, do a good model, you need to model different. There's different uh, immune system responses that happen, early ones and later ones, and things like that. Um, then, so there's there's just infection within one human. Um, there's another thing uh, which I'm going to headline under R not. Um, uh, completely like you don't even have to worry about the details of the individual infection much. You do actually need to know whether it's droplet or, or aerosol or whatever. But at some point, you just kind of abstract that out and you say, if one person is infected with wild type um, in the normal course of her life and there's, you know, not masking and not um, social distancing, she's going to infect X, you know, and with delta, she's going to infect Y. And the difference between X and Y is, I forget, three times, five times, something like that. Um, so that model, the the, uh, the epidemiology model, doesn't really have to rely on the biology model of immune response uh, much. I mean, there's some interaction, but it's just, you know, how many, you can, you can kind of judge by observation how many people are going to get infected, and we call that R-naught, right? So Delta has a higher R naught, significantly higher R naught, and that's the big problem. Um, it doesn't, Delta doesn't, I don't think it survives longer on surfaces or in aerosols. Um, it denatures in the same way. Um, it does have some tricks uh, about how infective it is. So if you have, I, th I think your model is generally correct when you say it's probably more like dozens or hundreds of particles, you know, but your body can can take care of, you know, a hundred wild type particles, um, but it's going to get overwhelmed with fifty uh, delta particles or something like that, or it's 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 not going to protect you. And I don't know if that that number is not right, but yeah, just talk.
How about now? I, was, I have my mute button on. Sorry. Thanks for noticing. Um, my browser also just did all kinds of weird flashy stuff. I wonder how the, the recording is going to come out. Um, there's, there's some really interesting things in there, Stefan. I think um, I, it, it, you know, and I, I guess I wanted to make an observation that at least in the U.S., we have a taboo against um, uh, looking at uh, differences between, you know, religious groups or cultural groups or, or things like that. And so um, it, it's actually hard and, and counterintuitive to be thinking that way, um, at least in the U.S. Wallapalooza, yeah. I, I would say yes. Um, so this effort is mainly interested, I, or that we're most successful when we're sense making for things that are hard to make sense of. So you know, and part of that is is a recursive. So what's the most important thing to make sense about, right? Um, but but yes, um, making setting up conditions for well. Maybe a different way to say it. Um, delta is striking and worthy of an emergent, emergent event response um, because it's different, um, and because we got used to wild type and, and uh, variant A and things like that. Um, uh, I one of the one of the public health uh, conundrums is that we trained ourselves against alpha and wild type and there's a bunch of things that people just know now like um you know that the symptoms for wild type um they know the symptoms for delta they don't know um symptoms for delta look a lot like a cold so that means that unless we uh educate people that delta is different people are going to go be thinking i don't have covid because i just have a cold and i'm going to go you know meet with my fellows um uh, delta is different. The the R naught is significantly different, and that means that you you take different uh, you know different precautions. You know you mask a lot more quickly. You social distance a lot farther away. You you know and then um, so so into that, I think it's well within the purview of this effort. Um, even though it's named Delta, it's kind of like Delta adjacent and, you know, setting us up for the next thing if, if we have a, a subsequent surge with a, a different variant. Um, doing what we can to reduce the production of new variants. Um, I, Delta Plus, I think, is not as, as interesting as it sounds um, from what I hear. Um, and, and similarly, I just saw a tweet today. I didn't dig into it, but somebody said, Actually, it was Joanne who sent it to me. Um, uh, whoever's doing the PR for Lambda, they're doing an amazing job because Lambda is not as interesting as as it sounds. Um, but but anyway, um, yes. So long story short, Jerry, yes. Um, uh, understanding how variants occur and why we should be vaccinating as many people as we can um, is important to this
Joanne, Joanne and I had this uh, debate briefly this morning. Um, I said, well, if I were emperor of the world, I would just tell everybody that we're not going to have school for the first two months. You know, we're, we're going to wait until Delta gets better before we're going to send kids to school. And Joanne said, yeah, sure, that sounds great. And that's not going to happen. So, um, so what do you do, right? And air filtration would help. It, it's not, it wouldn't cure it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, those are totally in uh, Diamond Age. Uh, there's kind of a viral thing that um, that's going around uh, a guy with a camera and um, and a sprinkler keeping people off his lawn. And TensorFlow, I think, is is the system he was using, the AI system to recognize people. Um, uh, thank you all. Uh, we're coming to the end of our hour, um, and I'm going to agree, Chris, with the hour. Um, uh, would we do this again? Um, and I think we would coordinate a time uh, uh, in Mattermost, probably. Um, I would be happy as well.
Um, and there are at least a few of us who would come back for a session like that. I, I would. Um, I want to kind of uh, uh, echo something that Ken said uh, somewhere, um, which is that, yeah, it, Metamos is interesting. I'm not going to be there, Pete. Uh, uh, and Stefan. Uh, so what do we do besides that? So this is a little bit of what we're going to do, I think. Um, Bill, you're spot on having a few people in a room talking about stuff. The bandwidth is a lot higher than than we can sustain in, in Mattermost and Factor. Um, even though I think Mattermost and Factor, there's a different kind of bandwidth, I guess, actually, that we can deploy there. Um, uh, Joanne knows a lot of stuff that comes off of Twitter and YouTube. Um, and um, and some of that she can just copy over. Some of it she has to explain. <laughs> um, another thing I heard from Bill earlier today in a different call was, so once we've made sense of it, what do we do? How do we cope? What's the, you know, what? Yeah. Um, folks, Google's going to kick us out anyway, um, so uh, I'm going to make sure I, yeah, I actually like it. Um, thanks, everybody. Super, super important, super useful. Thanks very much. <laughs>